All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host Chuck Stevenson coming at you with a fight review. We're going to Kansas City, Kansas for Invicta FC number 41. We're going to the main event in the straw weight division. Janessa Morandon coming in at 10 and 3, taking on Montserrat Ruiz at 8 and 1. Now, you know, when they made this main event, I was like, this is kind of a weak main event. Not, nothing particularly special about this one. But the actual fight itself made it worth it. Now, before we get into the fight itself, once again, Janessa Morandon missed weight. I don't understand how someone can get booked at Adam weight when she first got to Invicta. Fight got canceled because she couldn't make weight. Moves up to straw weight and then repeatedly misses weight at straw weight as well. She's got to do something about that, and I'll talk about that more later. Anyway, fight starts. Both fighters come out to the center looking to tee off. They're exchanging punches and low kicks. Um, Ruiz drove Miranda towards the fence with her striking. She likes to let off a night, like a, a big flurry at a time. She did this several times where she would just let off these big flurries. Um, they get to the fence, they get into the clinch. Nice little uh, clinch fight there, pummeling back and forth. Um, don't see that too often. Marie's tried to, excuse me, Ruiz tried to go for a throw that was successfully defended by Morandon. Um, then they're fighting again, again near the fence. Uh, Ruiz had her back towards the fence and she again fought her way off the fence with just an, a really aggressive, ferocious flurry. Ruiz is a very aggressive fighter. Um, another Ruiz flurry. After that, back Morandon to the fence. Morandon gets her against the fence, throws. Morangin to the ground, trapping her against the fence because they were right up against it. Basically, takes it, gets her inside hip towards the fence, throws Ruiz down, or excuse me, Ruiz throws Morandin down, trapping her against the fence. Uh, Ruiz immediately traps Morandin's right arm between her legs. I'm thinking, oh, she's going for scarf hold uh, lock, arm lock here. She wasn't at first, though. She, was, she wanted to, you know, get a win via ground and pound. So she starts pounding away with her fist at Mirandin's head. Uh, Mirandin, though, tries to scramble. She tries to get her, to circle around with her feet on the fence. And Ruiz decides, you know what? Forget the ground and pound. I got the arm trapped. I'm going to go for it. So she applies pressure to the arm lock, forcing the tap. Three minutes and 28 seconds of the first round. Your winner via submission due to scarf hold, key lock, Montserrat Ruiz. And I say it's a key lock because if you look at the angle of the forearm compared to the upper arm there of Morandin in the pictures, uh, she has it at an angle where it would be properly a key lock or an Americana. So a scarf hold, key lock there. Again, three minutes, 28 seconds, round one. Very quick fight. Um, impressive submission. To me, it mostly reminded me of Ayaka Miura, who fights over in one championship. That is like her signature move, is throw to scarf hold and arm lock. I've talked about her in a few different videos. I've reviewed several of her fights. Very much reminded me of Ayaka Miura. Now this fight leaves a lot of questions for me. You know, first off, will Mirandon ever get her weight cut under control? It seems like she's not. I mean, this is like, I don't know how many times she's missed weight. She's too, she's way too short to be moving up to flyweight, but Shannon Knapp, the president of Invicta, she's forced fighters to move up before after missing weight on more than one occasion. She might have to be forced, to have to force uh, Janessa Morandon to move up to flyweight, which is at five foot nothing or five one, they're, you know, however short she is. That's not going to be easy for her. Another question. How good is Ruiz? We saw her. She got beat up pretty badly against Danielle Taylor back at Invicta. I want to say number 33. Um, yes, it was definitely number 33. Um, it, it was a good fight. Went to the decision, but she, she also tore, uh, I think, her meniscus or her ACL. One of those two. Um, Looked very good here. Not the most technical fighter, but very aggressive, strong, finishing, you know, killer instinct. So how good is Ruiz? It's going to be hard to tell because 
uh, on the back of that question, you have to ask, is Morangin just not that good? Like Invicta likes, seems to like her. They book her a lot. They've given her a lot of opportunities, but every time she steps up, she falls down hard. So maybe she's just not that good. Maybe she's just not ready for even the top of the Invicta division. It's hard to say because we're not quite sure how good Ruiz is yet. Now for things to work on for Ruiz, I'd like to see her tighten up her punches. When she was coming forward with those big flurries, she was getting really loopy with those punches. And someone who can fight off the back foot good could easily just flick out a jab and stop her right in her tracks. Or even, you know, throw, throw the power side and she'd be running right into that power side, which would not be a good result. Um, for a Mirandin, again, we're going back to the weight cut. Wasn't a whole lot to go off of for this fight as far as technique wise, but she's got to get her weight cut down, period, dot. Now for fights to make, for Mirandin, well, she, we know she's not gonna to wanna to go to the ground anytime soon. She's been submitted twice in I believe her last three or four fights. Um, I know she got submitted against, oh, what's her name? The former champion who's now in the UFC, her name escapes me right now. And then she got um, submitted in this fight against Ruiz. Of course, she also got knocked out against Emily Ducote, but I don't think the matchmakers are gonna want her put her up against anyone that can is gonna take her down and submit her. So I, I proffer this fight between Mirandin and either Cynthia Arcio or Danielle Taylor. Neither of these fighters are gonna, gonna to wanna to go to the ground. They're both primarily strikers. Arcio is more of a karate based striking, it tends to have a bit of a sideways stance. So they're definitely gonna to wanna to stand with her. Neither of them have that great a power. Danielle Taylor packs some power, but it's been a while since we've really seen it. Now for Montserrat at Ruiz, this might be a little bit too early, but I'd like, I think, you know, she just won a main event. The strawweight title is currently vacant. Put her in there with Emily Ducote. Emily Ducote it just came off a big win, main event or co-main event win over um, Juliana Lima. She also fought the last Invicta Strawweight title fight against Kanako Murata, coming up short against Murata, and I believe that I believe that was a split decision. So Ducote is still up there at the top of that division. Ruiz against Ducote. For the vacant title would definitely let us know where Ruiz stands in the strawweight division, at least as far as Invicta goes. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the fight. Nice little main event here. I had my doubts about it, but those doubts were, you know, put to rest. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the fight in the comments down below. If you like the fight, please give it a like. Um, also, please share it as well. And hey, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to WMAC Now, the most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.